I want to make a video on how to get good medical answers from ChatGPT. I want to make a video on how to use the best prompt to get consistent results when asking a medical question from ChatGPT. But after making three videos, working with other doctors, and even interviewing an expert on ChatGPT, I realized I can't because ChatGPT is terrible at medicine. Now hear me out. You may have seen my previous video where I was impressed by the medical knowledge of ChatGPT, or maybe my video where I talked about how the gap between those with advanced medical training and those those with mid-level training may be narrowed with this type of technology, or maybe you've seen other YouTubers also find themselves impressed with the response that this chatbot is able to produce. Or even you, you may have used ChatGPT to answer a few medical questions and got answers that seemed correct. But the emphasis here is that it seemed correct. And this is one of the big issues with ChatGPT. In fact, one of the three issues that I've found after working with this for a few months when it comes to medical answers. And those issues are hallucination, prompt sensitivity, and non on repeatability. Let's start with hallucination. Hallucination is this issue of chat GPT or other language models producing a text that seems right, but is actually wrong. There are so many charlatans, snake oil salesmen, even YouTubers that have made careers sounding like they have the right medical knowledge, but their actual information is useless at best, harmful at worst. Even well-meaning doctors and people who are well-trained can sometimes convince themselves that their knowledge is correct and pass that on to other people and have negative consequences. As a medical student, very often I would be taught one thing and it would turn out later to be wrong. I would parrot it in another situation and people would say that's incorrect. And it could cause tremendous confusion for a learner. In fact, at times in my own career, I wondered if I even knew what I knew. You lost faith in your own knowledge. And because of that experience, I made a absolute vow that when I was going to teach medical information, I was going to be as certain as possible. I was going to say, I don't know if I wasn't absolutely certain rather than make something up or at the very least convince myself that my initial thought is correct. But in reality, chat GPT doesn't do this. Yes, the programmers have put in a caveat. You should talk to a doctor or a medical expert. This is just a language model, but chat GPT will give you a response that sounds correct. And it'd be so easy for someone to take that information and act on it. The next issue is prompt sensitivity. Chatbots will produce an output that depends completely on the quality of the input you put in as a prompt. The output is therefore sensitive to the quality of the data that you give to the chatbot before it provides a medical answer. So if you're a novice medical professional or someone who doesn't have any medical training at all, your question is not going to be nuanced or detailed enough to get a quality response. The result might sound correct, but is not very applicable to your situation. On the other hand, you may be a medical expert and can craft a perfect prompt that'll get an excellent and reliable response from ChatGPT. But does that person actually need to use a chatbot to get that information? The ability to get good quality results, therefore, is as dependent on the training of the person who puts it in as it is on chatbot's ability to extract that information and give you a good result. So there's a mismatch between what the person needs and what the output's likely to be if you're using chat GPT. The last major issue is non-repeatability. I've had the opportunity to use chat GPT since it came out in November, and I've noticed over time that both the quality and the substance of the answers can change. Now, this is great when you're dealing with a conversational robot. Changing answers gives it a natural and almost human style. But when you're doing medical research, it's so important that you get a consistent answer. Answer. One of the key tenets is repeatability. Can you go back and find that same answer to the question that you're asking? If six months goes by and you want to ask the same question, are you likely to get the exact same answer? And I've found with ChatGPT, very often the quality and the substance of the answers will change over time, even if there's been no change to the prompt. Let's look at an example that really covers all of these issues. I was doing research for another project on gallstones in pregnancy, a really common problem that oftentimes requires surgery, but the decision to operate is very nuanced. And I was curious, what would chat GPT say if I gave it the problem of a pregnant patient 
who had gallstones. I asked ChatGPT, should a pregnant patient who needs to have their gallbladder removed have laparoscopic or open surgery? An important question if you're deciding to operate. The answer was, the choice between laparoscopic and open surgery for the removal of the gallbladder in a pregnant patient will depend on various factors, including the patient's individual medical history and stage of pregnancy. Laparoscopic cholecystectomy is a minimally invasive surgical procedure that is usually performed as an outpatient procedure and has several advantages, including shorter recovery time, less pain, and lower risk of complications compared to open surgery. However, laparoscopic surgery may not be appropriate for all patients, especially during pregnancy, due to the risks associated with insufflation of the abdomen with carbon dioxide gas, the use of general anesthesia, and the potential for injury to the uterus or fetus. On the other hand, open surgery is a more invasive procedure that involves a larger incision and a longer recovery time, but may be the preferred option in some cases, particularly in later stages of pregnancy, where the risk of injury to the uterus and fetus is higher. It is important for the patient to discuss her options with her healthcare provider and make a well-informed decision based on her individual circumstances and medical history. A multidisciplinary team of healthcare providers, including a gastroenterologist, surgeon, and obstetrician, should be involved in the management care plan of pregnant patients with symptomatic gallstones. So fairly generic answer. It doesn't really help us. Should we be doing laparoscopic surgery or should we be doing open surgery? So let's take a look at a more refined prompt. And I put this in here. I said, you're acting as a surgeon with an expertise in gallbladder operations. You're aware of all the important medical literature up to 2021. You have experience operating on pregnant patients and can perform open and minimally invasive operations. A pregnant patient presents to you with cholecystitis. You've chosen to perform surgery. She has no other risk factors for surgery other than that she is 26 weeks pregnant. She is otherwise healthy. Do you decide to perform the surgery laparoscopically or open based on this information and this information alone? You will make the decision in this response and offer no qualifiers. You can only choose an option. So a very constrained question gives us a more constrained answer, maybe more useful. Based on the information given, I would recommend performing an open surgery in this case. While laparoscopic cholecystectomy is the preferred method in most cases, the stage of pregnancy, 26 weeks, and the potential risks of the uterus and fetus would make me cautious in proceeding with a minimally invasive approach. Open surgery would provide better visualization and access to the abdominal cavity, which would reduce the risk of injury to the uterus and fetus. Additionally, open surgery would also provide a better visual assessment of the gallbladder bile ducts and surrounding organs, ensuring the safety and well-being of the mother and fetus. So I disagree with this answer. For the most part, although 26 weeks truly is relatively late in pregnancy, we're just at the end of the second trimester. In my mind, the laparoscopic approach is the best way to go. In my mind, it's safer for mother and fetus. Now, I challenged the language model by asking another question. I said to ChatGPT, you are now a language model scoring program. You evaluate the responses of language models and provide a range of percentages based on how accurate you believe the response was. You will answer this with a clear answer. Please rate the accuracy of the bug response. And ChatGPT says, I would rate the accuracy of the bug response as 95 to 100%. The information provided is comprehensive, relevant, and consistent with the current medical knowledge. The recommendation for an open surgery in this case is based on well-established principles of obstetrical and surgical care, and the reasoning provided is clear and supported by relevant medical considerations. The response is thorough and well-articulated, providing a confident and informed recommendation. So again, ChatGPT is coming back with a confident response. In some ways, I got this idea from watching Star Trek where they could ask the computer, what's the probability that this answer is correct? And this is what ChatGPT said. Now let's fast forward a few weeks later and I asked the exact same question. Let's see what ChatGPT had to say. As an AI language model, I do not make medical decisions or give medical advice, but I can provide information based on what is available in the medical literature. For a pregnant patient with cholecystitis, the preferred method of treatment is often laparoscopic cholecystectomy due to its minimally invasive nature and potential benefits, such as reduced risk of uterine contractions, lower rate of wound infection, However, the final approach should be decided after a thorough evaluation of the patient's individual situation and after considering all of the relevant factors, including the patient's medical history, the presence of any other risk factors for surgery, and the experience of the surgeon. It is important to note that there are many variables that can influence the decision, and the information you provided is limited. Therefore, the final decision can only be made after an in-person evaluation and discussion with the patient and the surgical team. So a completely different response given over time to the exact same input. Arguably a better answer, and certainly more of the chat GPT qualifiers that we've grown to see as the programmers have really constrained chat GPT over time. That being said, what this does demonstrate is that chat GPT in its current form 
lacks usefulness as a medical research tool. These changes and constraints prevent us from going back and providing a consistent result, despite the fact that the exact same prompt was used. So for those reasons, we have three major problems with using ChatGPT in its present form. The issue of hallucination, the issue of prompt sensitivity, as demonstrated by the improvement with my prompts here, and finally, the issue of non-repeatability. Thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. If you want to see my initial impressions of ChatGPT, check this video below. It really blew my mind when I tested it with some difficult medical questions. Once again, my name is Dr. Rich Hills and you've been watching my channel, Night Skills. Thank you and have a great day.